The glory days of NASA are over. Today, the military-industrial complex is marching towards world dominance through space technology on behalf of the global corporate interests. To find out how and why the space program will be used to fight all future wars on Earth and from space, it's important to go back in time to understand how the public has been misled about the origins and true purpose of the space program. If we really want to understand what's going on in space today and what's happening with the plan to put weapons in space, I think it's instructive to go back and understand the origins of the U.S. space program. And to do that, you have to go back to Nazi Germany. Hitler recruited a brilliant young rocket scientist by the name of Werner von Braun, who had a weekend rocket club, to come to work for the Nazis to build the V-1 and V-2 rockets that were used to terrorize the cities of London and Paris and Brussels towards the end of World War II. And for von Braun and his team, uh, they set up along the Baltic Sea a place called Pinamunde. It was a research and development center for the Nazi rocket uh, operation. And to this place at Pinamunde, the Nazis brought thousands of Jews and French resistance fighters to serve as prisoners, essentially slaves, to build this production effort. Well, the British found out about it, went in and bombed the entire operation. And so the Nazis said, we've got to move to a more secure location. And down inside of central Germany, there's a mountain chain called the Hartz Mountains. And in that mountain, there's a huge tunnel where the Nazis were storing military hardware. Well, they cleared the whole thing out, moved the entire rocket operation into the tunnel, named it Middlework. And just outside the mountain tunnel at Middlework, the Nazis built a brand new concentration camp called Dora. And to Dora, the Nazis brought 40,000 Jews, gypsies, French resistance fighters, homosexuals, communists, even a black American GI were brought there to serve as slaves for the operation. Well, inside the mountain tunnel, the slaves began to sabotage the operation. They left screws unturned. They urinated on the wires. So that when von Braun and his team were launching the rockets, they were going haywire. And so they sent their team in to find out who was doing this. They identified 100 of the slaves and summarily hung them in front of everyone as a warning that you will not interfere with this operation. Well, eventually the Allies even closed in on this place too. And on the day that they did, von Braun and his team fled for the hills, knowing that if they were captured here, they would be accused of crimes against humanity. One of the first to arrive at this place was an 18-year-old American GI by the name of Hugh Carey, who later became governor of New York State. And he said when they arrived, what they discovered, lying at their feet, was thousands and thousands and thousands of dead bodies. And come to find out, 25,000 of the 40,000 slaves at this place perished at the hands of the Nazis. Well, you know, immediately after the war, the US and the Allies created the Nuremberg Trials, at which time we brought the Nazis to justice for their crimes against humanity. But 1,500 of the top Nazis never went to trial. They were smuggled into the United States by the U.S. military in, uh, under a program called Operation Paperclip, smuggled in through Boston and West Palm Beach, Florida. And Werner von Braun and his rocket team, a hundred of them, along with 100 copies of the V-2 rocket, were sent to Huntsville, Alabama, where von Braun became the first director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. What's interesting is the other 1,400 Nazis, who were they? Well, some of them were brought to the United States to work for the CIA. Others were brought to the United States to do the LSD drug experiments and the MK Ultra Mind experiments during the 1960s where people were jumping out of windows. Some of the uh, Nazi scientists that in Germany had been taking Jews and putting them in freezing temperatures to see how the body would react to that were sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio and were put in charge of the 
U.S. military flight medicine program. And so when you uh, take 1,500 of the top Nazi scientists and essentially seed the military industrial complex, the question I have is, do they bring with them an ideological contamination? Well, not only did Von Braun go to work for NASA, but the guy that was in charge of the V-2 flight test program up at Pinamundi along the Baltic Sea, a guy by the name of Kurt Debus, became the first director of the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And then the man that recruited Von Braun, Major General Walter Dornberger, the guy that was sent by uh, Hitler to recruit Von Braun to come to work for the Nazis, he became vice president of Bell Aerosystems Corporation in New York that made its riches building the helicopters for the war in Vietnam. In fact, when NASA was created, the US military freaked out. You're going to have a civilian space program? You can't do that. The military has to be in charge of space. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, the military was told. From the first day, we're going to have a NASA oversight committee that ensures that the Pentagon controls the space program. And Major General Walter Dornberger, the Nazi that recruited von Braun, was appointed to that NASA oversight committee. In fact, in 1958, Dornberger testified before the United States Congress, saying that America's top space priority should be to, quote, conquer, occupy, keep, and utilize space between the Earth and the Moon. And in fact, Later on, in a speech before a National Missile Industry Conference, Dornberger told the assembled, gentlemen, I didn't come to this country to lose the Third World War. I lost two already. And then finally, the man that was in charge of production at Middlework, inside the mountain tunnel there in Germany, Arthur Rudolph, he became the first project director of the NASA Saturn V rocket program that took the United States to the moon. And so these are the essential origins of the US space program. And so when we hear this slogan, master of space, that is on the building of the US Space Command headquarters in Colorado Springs at Peterson Air Force Base, do we not find an ideological similarity between master of space and Hitler's slogan, Deutschland über alles, Germany overall. Well, what were the major implications of the Space Act? They simply said that we were to uh, pursue uh, the development of activities in space for the benefit of all mankind. Well, let's take a look at this U.S. Space Command. What is it? It's the command that has been put in charge of controlling space. And it has just recently been merged with the old Strategic Air Command. So now that the, the space guys, if you will, and the old bomber guys and the missile guys are all part of the same command. And the Space Command put out a planning document a few years ago called Vision for 2020. And on the cover of it, you see a satellite hitting targets on the Earth below. Let's take a look at some of the language in this so-called vision for 2020. The Space Command says that in the future, because of corporate globalization of the world economy, they expect that there's going to be a widening gap between the haves and the have-nots, between the rich and the poor all over the world. And as a result of that, the Pentagon predicts that there's going to be more and more regional instability around the world. because people that are under the boot of these multinational corporations are going to organize. They're going to try to organize unions. They're going to organize to get the, these corporations from controlling their governments. And the Pentagon says, you know, we can't put a Marine on every single street corner of the world to suppress these populations. But with space technology in place, we'll be able to see everything, hear everything, and essentially target everything in every place on the Earth. And the Vision 2020 says that space superiority will emerge as an essential element of battlefield success in future warfare. Vision for 2020 also talks about dominating space and controlling space. And they actually define 
control of space. They say control of space is the ability to assure access to space, freedom of operations within the space medium. And I think, most importantly of all, they say, an ability to deny others the use of space. So here we are, 5% of the world's population. We're going to deny other countries the use of space because we are going to be the masters of space.